One of the challenges that comes with having a fire behavior based YouTube channel is making interesting visuals that demonstrate whatever concept I happen to be talking about. And for the most part, they either come with the implied or the I'll just come out and say it, don't try this at home. Because the age old adage is true. If you play with fire, you're gonna get burnt. But I have been asked a few times how I make these fire whirls. And as experiments go, we're still playing with fire. It's still a dangerous thing to do. But as long as you take a few precautions, that risk is more manageable. So I thought I might go ahead and show you how I make these fire whirls with the proviso that if you're gonna try this at home, you need to do it with either adult supervision or be an adult yourself. You need to find a, a big open concrete area away from any combustible material. And just know that whenever you're playing with fire, it is a dangerous thing to do. So you really need to take all care to ensure your safety. With that all out of the way, it's worth revisiting what exactly are fire wheels. Fire wheels are rapidly spinning vortexes of rising combustible material. And they will generally occur on the edges of wildfires when there is wind shear or winds traveling in different directions. Now these fire wheels can be anywhere from less than a meter high to stretching many hundreds of meters into the sky. And the larger ones can pose a significant safety risk to people on the fire ground by either changing the fire behavior itself or launching embers well ahead of the fire front. And so it's probably fair to say that if for whatever reason you're going to be near one of these fire wells, it's probably best that you understand how they work, which is why I made that original video in the first place. But when we're talking about making these fire wells, I've seen a number of different ways in which they can be created. One, where you place a number of fans in a circle around a fire, turn those fans on to force a vortex around that fire, which then creates a fire wheel. And while this one is quite effective, it doesn't replicate the fires on the fire ground, so I didn't want to use that method to replicate the conditions. There is another one where you place a fire on a turntable and a metal grid over the top and you spin it, and that will create a fire wheel as well. And yet, still, this is pretty unrealistic when it comes to the fire ground, so I wanted to try and replicate the fire wheel as close to the conditions as I could to the real world. And honestly, I've still ended up cheating, but I think the way I've created fire wheels is more realistic to the other two methods because I'm not using any introduced spinning via a fan or a spinning turntable. I'm actually using the convection of the fire to draw air in, which then spins and creates the fire wheel. Now, the way I've done it is by placing three boards on the concreted area. Now, these boards have one opening on one side and the rest of it is fully enclosed. Now, I then place a fourth board just slightly away from the opening of the other three boards. Now this creates a gap where air can be drawn in towards the base of what will be my fire. Now for my fire, all I do is place some sawdust at the base of the three boards and then use a small amount of methylated spirits as my fuel source. And the combination of sawdust and methylated spirits just ensures that I don't end up with a running liquid fire and cause further hazards that way. Now, what happens when I light the methylated spirits is that the convection current above the fire quickly establishes itself. And when this happens, the heat rapidly rises, which means more air needs to be drawn in at the base of the fire. Now, because I have boards blocking the air completely on three sides and one board partially blocking the air, the air that is being drawn in is being forced to circulate around the fire. And this is in some ways similar to the fire ground because when we have a look at fire wheels burning on the edge of fires, the prevailing wind is generally blocked from the convection caused by that fire, which means that the fire wheel is being created by winds moving around the edge of the fire front. And so in some ways, the boards that we've placed down replicate the convection and smoke caused by our fire. Now, when the winds are drawn in around our fire, they allow our flames to rapidly begin to circulate. And when they circulate, the flame length can rapidly increase as those products of combustion are contained within that vortex, stretching higher and higher. 
and this is how I make the firewells. Now, during the day, this doesn't look all that special because I'm burning methylated spirits, which generally in the daylight doesn't create that much of an interesting flame. But at night, the story is different because now the flames are much more apparent to our eyes and we can much more easily see the spinning vortex. Now, the way I've changed the color of the flame is by adding some copper sulfate and some copper oxide, which if you watched my previous video, you'll know is creating atomic emission, which emits light in that specific green band. And when that copper sulfate and oxide is drawn up into the vortex, it creates those really interesting green firewells. All right, well, there we go. That's the way I came up with to make some firewells. And if you're gonna have a go at it, please, please use some precautions and try and do it safely because anytime you're playing with fire, you are risking getting burnt. That's just how it is. So if you're gonna go ahead and try it, make sure you either are an adult or you have one present. Stay away from any burnable material and always do things as carefully and safely as you possibly can. But that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.